Amen. Thank God for salvation. How about it, saints? Amen. Friday night Bible class. We get a chance to get into the Word of God. I love teaching. I love being taught. And uh, because we get a chance to marinate a little bit in the Word of God. So tonight as we get ready to get into the Word, we pray that you uh, came to participate. Right? We got real quiet. Came to participate, right? Amen. Got a few more. All right. Some, some kind of way. I like that. That's right. So we thank God for being here tonight. Let's look to the Lord that he bless our coming together. Lord, we appreciate you and we thank you, dear God, Lord, for all you've done for us, Lord. And my God, thank you for the joy of God in our soul, Lord God. Thank you, dear God, Lord. Uh, we thank you so much for rescuing us from sin and from self, dear God. Lord God, we are praying tonight, dear God, as we learn more about you through your word, that you would come in and that you would anoint, dear God, that you would have your wonderful way, dear God. My God, Lord, just uh, bless the class tonight. Everything that is said and done, pray that you have your way in it, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank the Lord. So, you know, um, some people may look on us sometime and wonder, man, do they have trouble? Of course we do. Amen. But, man, I love being saved so much that even in the midst of the trouble, especially after the after you first get this first punch from trouble, Sister Lenora, that hits. And you, can, you find yourself over in the corner praying, Lord, help, you know. Amen. But you just hang in there, and then the grace kicks in. Yes, and next thing you know, you come into church, and you rejoice, and you do what God wants you to do. And when you, when you open the box to see if it's still there, oh, yep, it's still there. <laughs> but you know what? But you, you, we're going to have our joy in the Lord anyway. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. I've tried the other way. Negative thinking will take you, it, it, that's, a, that's a bad way to live. Man, forget that. Things are going to always be happening, and something always going to, whatever. But God has been good, saints. Amen. Hasn't he? Yes. Wherever, how old you are, he brought you all the way up to that age, right now, today. And had us sit here tonight. So we thank God for that. Let's continue to pray for those who are sick. Let's continue to um, uh, cry out to the Lord for others. Let's not uh, be consumed of our own life. Is that right? Yes. Amen. So we thank God tonight for the Bible class. And we were dealing with something, the elements of being a saint. And tonight we're going to move on to another thought. But before we do, there was a question on the floor. It wasn't there. Amen. How many got a chance to look into it? They, they, all right. Uh, before I have, I have a special person who's going to come up and just nail it down for all of us, but I'd like to take at least two people from this side and two people, but I want to do this quickly so we can get into tonight's lesson. So I need two people right away from this side and two people from this side. If you would stand and come to the mic right now, please. I saw the hands go up and I would ask those, some of those people. God, see one on the side, one. Is Brother Kenny, are you standing? Oh, you're just coming to take a seat. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Come on around. Come on around. Repeat the question, I will. Uh, this is the question dealing with, wait, does anybody remember the question? It was about, well, somebody come to the mic and just give the class a question. Because, you know, if I stand here and do all the talking, it's one way. Somebody come give the class the question from last week. What was the question? Come on. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the question was whether or not Michael... The, was the, the archangel represented Christ, or if he was Christ. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you okay, don't, don't leave. And then, no, 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 wait, don't leave. We got two on this, two on this side. Come on, my brother, let's start with you. I What's try your not name to make and, this, and, my name, people on, online may not know who you are. Okay, my name is Brother Fredell Campbell, and um, I did some research, and what I found was that Christ is transformed in many different places in the Old Testament, um, and I have examples of that um, in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, in Genesis. We talked about how uh, he was there with the creation with God. That was Genesis 1:26. Um, he said, "Let us make man in our image." So he was with he was with God in creation. Uh, there is was another. There, is there an example of the effect of 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Is it before that? Before the before the creation? Not that I could think. I heard a lot. Mm -hmm. Genesis one. What was it? Oh, in the beginning. Okay, but Genesis what's one. What's the very first verse say? Genesis one and one. In so, the beginning. It sounds so funny up here. It's easy to use. What does it say? What's the first few words in the first? In the beginning, God. God created the heaven and the earth. If you look at that translation of God as what? Who remembers? Ooh. Okay, we'll leave it right there. I'm going to let you all search it out. Come on, my brother, finish up. Okay. Um, I gave you, I took you to the water, now you got a drink. <laughs> so there's many examples. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, when he met Abram, uh, after Abram took over or helped Lot and Sodom, the kings of Sodom. How does so, that, how, how does that, how does that Is it uh, He was a high priest. He, yeah, he was the high priest of God. And in uh, Hebrews 5 and 6, Paul brings out about how he is styled uh, as basically as Christ, his ministry. Why? What's special about him? Uh, he had no ending. He had no beginning. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, we talk about the, the three men. This is just what I've, this is my belief. The three men that met Abram um, at the, in the plains of Mamre when he was making that promise to Sarah. Um, about her having a child. My belief is that Jesus was one of them because two of the angels actually went back to destroy Sodom and God spoke with uh, with Abram. So I'm not going to go into details about that, but there's a lot of scriptures, but I honestly believe that one of those angels might have been Christ. Okay, so your example, you get good examples of him being transformed. Being transformed, okay. yeah. Um, Daniel's lion, Daniel, uh, not Daniel, the lion, then um, the, uh, the three Hebrew boys and now, the fire. let me do this for time's sake. Yeah. You gave good examples of him being transferred. Yes. Now let's deal with the main question. Okay. So in Roman in Revelation 12, 7 through 10, uh, Christ was at war with, um, or Michael the archangel was at war with the dragon. And we know that that scripture relates to in Matthews where Christ was saying that, um, that I beheld lightning, uh, I beheld Satan as lightning being cast down. From heaven, so that was basically the exalted place in man's heart. Christ is the only one that can save somebody from sin or from the devil, the power of the devil. Um, and so, I also looked up the name of Michael. Michael in Hebrew actually means "who is like God," so that's an answer for that. Um, and then also in First Thessalonians four sixteen, Christ said that. Um, I'm sorry. Let me go there real quick. Very good. You know, it's, it's going a little bit longer. I'll yeah, just, I'm so if you sorry. all don't mind, I'll just go with him. And then because I want to, uh, because it, let me show you what he's doing. He's doing a great job. He says, look, is it possible for, for him to transform? One, two, three. Yes. He gave great examples, did he? So he said, That's, here are your examples of that. Then now he said, look, let me show you in symbol the work that only Christ can do. Mm -hmm. Gave that, right? You all with? You all agree? Now he's like, now he's nailing, nailing it down. And I'm, I'm going to ask, because I did ask for two on each side, but for time's sake, I'm just going to, since he's doing such a complete job, I'm just going to go with him, because I have to get to the key center on this question so that we can move on. Sorry about right. taking all the time. Uh, so First Thessalonians 4 and 16, and it says, this is, uh, is when Christ was coming, is going to be coming back. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I'll tell you what, because the same study. Give me one person on this side. I'm sorry. Come on, please. Please come to the mic. Come to the mic. So when you're dealing with topics like this, you know, people are doing the research, questions and stuff. I would just give hints. Dealing with topics like this, you see how he methodically went through? Yeah. Why don't say, well, you know, how can you, does Christ transfer? Oh, yeah, here you go. Right? He gave perfect examples on that. He walked us through different aspects, led us to uh, the final answer that moves right along with the thought. Okay? 
Um, maybe Sister Jillian could even give more than I. But my thoughts were related to the 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 difference of versus our angel versus archangel. Okay. I thought that was more. That, well, what go was for it. What is, what's your um, angels are simply messengers. Um, the scripture makes reference that we each have an angel in camps around about us, and so they they are there to serve and assist us in things of God, in things of God. But that archangel is a he is a higher level, as it were, of angel who is sent for a specific purpose. Um, he was sent to Mary. Um, he was sent to. Um, uh, Zechariah, that was the third one I had. There was one more before that. Um, and so he has specific duties, the archangel. Now, um, the scriptures make reference to Gabriel, uh, Michael. It, my research brought up um, Raphael. I don't know if I see the name Raphael in the scriptures per se, but what I found interesting is they each had command of different areas. Michael had command of things of military or war or battles and the, 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 the armies of God. Um, whereas Raphael, it said, uh, that he is the archangel of healing. And he's there when we're sick. He's there when, when our spirits are low. But the, the interesting one was Gabriel, the archangel of Gabriel. He is the communicator. And what touched my heart, uh, because this has happened to me so many times, when I've been down to pray and, and, and my soul is crying out and I can't get words out, he's, he's the archangel who commits that communication to God. What I say, he translates that. Sure. And, and he does it for not only for us, but for children. I'm thinking of how children pray and how innocent their prayer is. So there were so many parts of the archangel that bless my heart. Wonderful, wonderful. So we have, we have a lot we can uh, dig into and look into, and the Lord has uh, given us a lot of good knowledge and some understanding. <laughs> Notice I said some understanding. Right? Now, the one I haven't heard of is Raphael. Yeah, I, 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 if, if we don't have like straight Bible for it, I wouldn't, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't uh, bring that in because uh, you want to really always be able to back it up with scripture. All right, so I want to ask Brother Joe Hall. You all know him, right? I was like, Brother Joe Hall, would you speak? Yeah, brother. <laughs> right. Come on, my brother. Well, thank the Lord. I just wanted to say that um, um, they, they basically were covering uh, the main things. And as you said, brother, they went methodically, just one thing after the other, because we're dealing with that theoretical and we're dealing with practical. And uh, I, I even uh, got that word from uh, Sister Crystal, um, theophany, meaning the manifestation of an, of an individual or, or of Christ in various instances. And this, the question that was asked is, is the archangel Jesus? One of the things, you're looking at Michael, the archangel, that word Michael is, was brought out, what it means. If you look at the actual thing that Jesus said, and I always use this as rule of thumb, where I say by my precepts, is John 5.39. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because Jesus made this statement. And if somebody reads that really fast with a little bit of time I got, mm -hmm. this right here is my rule of thumb when it comes to reading the Old Testament, anything that has to do with God, anything that has to do with his word is what Jesus said here. Somebody search, read that. Search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal you life. You think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of which me. Which testify of me. See, when we try to separate things that are God, like the angels and all of these sorts of things, you find out that that's how come many times in false religion, they come up with devils, uh, with angels turning bad. Yeah. 
yep. and doing yep. various things. And all of that starts happening. And what we're looking at is the truth. Amen. The truth of God's word. If we go over to Daniel, the 10th chapter, and we're dealing with that word, Michael. Okay, you want to see him. And when you're dealing with Daniel and the vision that Daniel was having at that time, somebody read, I believe it's um, Daniel 10 and 13, I think is where it starts. Can somebody but read But the that? prince of the kingdom of Persia okay. withstood me mm -hmm. one and 20 days. Okay. But lo, Michael. Michael. One of the chief princes uh -oh. came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Look at this. He's looking at this vision, and he says, Michael. Now, this is an angel speaking. This is an angel speaking. And he said, Michael, he had to come and help. As Sister mentioned, and I believe somebody else if you notice, angels of themselves, they don't go face to face with the devil. I'm talking about with Satan. They may be dealing with demons and casting them and things of that, but when it comes to Satan, there's some power needed because this thing is in the way. I believe if you go down, I believe it's the 21st verse of that same chapter, it mentions Michael again. Mm -hmm. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. Mm -hmm. Mm. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, mm -hmm. your prince. Look at that. So it's, remember now, it's dealing with, there is none. See, it's, it's dealing with something here. You're looking at the practicality of Michael. Okay? So now when you deal with that, when you go to the New Testament and you start dealing with where it says, where Jude made that statement, he said that the archangel, what Michael, was dealing with the devil concerning the, you know, disputing about the body of Moses and all right. of that. Right. See, what you're dealing with here is the devil was trying to do something. According to some histories, some of the things that I had researched about, they were saying in the Jewish writings, I guess they believed that the devil was trying to basically convince people, and you heard people say this, that Moses wasn't saved. Did you hear that? They were trying to say, why? Because remember now, Moses was this great leader of God, and he had gotten out of order and everything else, but then he got back. And God hid that body. When, when Moses died, nobody yep. could find it. Right. So in the thoughts of these people, they, oh, what happened to Moses? Where'd he go? So the devil want to put in their mind, because they say there's a possibility the people might have wanted to try to worship. You know how they were. Right. Every time something was, they want to worship. Oh, he's, he's dead, and so now we got to worship Moses. Oh, Mount of Transfiguration. What did Peter say? Oh, it's good that we're here, Master. Let's make tabernacle for three. See? So Jesus had to deal with that, but he didn't come at them all, you know, ah, devil, you that? He said, the Lord rebuke you. That's some foolishness, devil. Now, when you get to the revelation, now you're dealing with the, the actual revealing of things that are to come and things that were going to happen. We know in the beginning of Revelation, it says he signified it by his angel unto yeah. his servant John. It's a signification here. Now you're looking at something represented. And you see here now that Michael, the archangel, or the head one, the one that's overall, leading his army against what? The devil and his angels. Why? Because it's talking about the church Amen. and talking about Jesus Christ, the head of the church. So yes, Michael, when you're looking at that and you start breaking it down, you will see that Michael is Jesus in that manifestation, whatever that manifestation the was. Operation. So I hope that that made it kind of clear for different ones so they can see that. And don't, don't let anybody be telling you about, oh, well, this angel fell and this one and all. And that name, I want to get one thing, that Raphael, that's not in the scripture. Uh, that you're not going to find that name, Raphael. There's some things that people talk about, um, the book of Enoch. Yeah. And it brings out all these names of these different angels and names of these different demons and all these sorts of things. We want to stick with the scriptures by the grace of God. Thank you, my brother.
So if I pick somebody in here to come up and summarize what both what was said, who's ready? All right, we're, we're ready to go on. All right, you can come back and look at this later. Thank the Lord. <laughs> but, but, just like just Chris, I told him last week, you, you did a whole series on Revelation. It's there. I can tell you, Sister Tanya, she was, I had never seen her study Revelation like that before. She got her book out. She was like, this is crystal clear. Well, <laughs> all right. Happened to be crystal clear, right? <laughs> but she sat there, and she had her notebook and, and her little reader glasses on and just going for it. Picked up more information, but it's up to you and me if we want to get this or not. Amen. Okay, because one thing about this, and this is going to be a good segue into tonight, we get a lot of teaching around here, don't we? A lot of information, don't we? Don't we? Okay, Brother Joe just rattled it off. I asked him today how you did that. That comes from years of giving yourself over to it. Because there's no other way around. No other way around it. Got to do it. So I like to bring other voices in sometimes because I think when we hear other voices, I've seen this over the years. I've seen, I've seen pre preachers come in. Um, Pastor Gordon may have been saying something all along. Then we'll get a guest preacher come in and the saints so, oh, oh, oh. I'll say, move, give me room. Amen. <laughs> uh, I was like, Lord, Pastor Gordon, I, I, I can tell you on many occasions, I was standing up there in that tape room, I was like, hey, Pastor Gordon just said that. I was like, man, uh -uh, Lord, help me to stay sensitive. Help me to stay sensitive. So I'm telling you, Saint. So we get a lot of information around here. Um, so tonight, let's move on to the topic at hand, and it's dealing really with this. I want to deal with something here, and I want to get several people again. Get your smart devices out, because I want you to look up a few words as we look to get into tonight. I want somebody to look up, as the reader, if you turn to Daniel 1, please. Daniel 1. And verse 4, please. Daniel 1 and verse 4. Children in whom was no blemish. Who, who is this talking about? We know this, don't we? We say Shadrach who? Why, would it, why do we always use those names? Why don't we use their original name? It sounds better. All the songs were made for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, wasn't it? Mishael and all of they don't use those names. Yeah. Okay, so that's who it's dealing with, okay? And it says what? Children in whom was no blemish. No blemish. But well favored. Well, they were well favored. And skillful in all Listen. wisdom. Skillful in what? All wisdom. I want, I want you to hear that. In wisdom, they were skillful. And what? And cunning in knowledge. They were very skillful. Skillful, also cunning, many uh, crafty and able to use knowledge very well. Uh huh. And understanding science. They understood science. And had such, and excuse me, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. Same people, some people are just leaders. God endow, endowed them with the ability to stand before um, C suite people. You know who the C suite is? Right? So your chief whatever's officers of whatever it aspect that operating executive whatever. And some people just have that ability to stand before them so they're not overwhelmed by the knowledge, I mean by the opportunity to do that and they, they can handle themselves very well in front of those people. Isn't that right, Dr. Jackson? Anyway. Oh, we have all types of people around here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want us to look up a few words here. I want us to look up the word science. 
One person look up the word science and tell me what that means. <laughs> Especially, listen, how it's used here. Right? Science. Somebody look that up. Somebody look up the word information. Information. What does that mean? I want someone to look up the word understanding. Understanding. And tell me what that means. And then lastly, I want someone to look up wisdom. Wisdom. Tell me what that means. So tonight, saints, elements of being a, a saint. One, one main element is that we're teachable. I said one main element is that we're teachable. Is that right? And we're leadable by God, aren't we? You know what I don't want to do? I don't want to be just an accumulator of information. Ever learning. But I know people who love to talk about the deep things of God. I'm doing the air quote. But then people question whether they're saved. Like, sort of a way, not sort of, that's a waste. <laughs> that knowledge is only going to damn me. That's right. All it's going to do. It's not for free. Is that right? I accumulate knowledge and I don't apply it to my life. I'm in trouble. You all agree with that? Amen. All right. Who has the word science? Who, who's ready to, especially as it is, that, come on, my sister, sister Linda. And those who have, anybody else who has information, somebody else who has understanding, some, well, I hope we all have understanding. And whoever has <laughs> wisdom, you all can come on out to the mic. I need those four. Oh, you wanted it in that context, so uh, this is from the Science Council. Okay. But anyway, uh -oh. their definition is, science is the pursuit and application of knowledge and understanding of the natural and social world following a systematic methodology based on evidence, sci um, scientific what? methodology including objective observation, measurement, Data. Well, see, and, 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 and we thing. don't have to go even into those. I said, wait, wait, read the first part. I want to make sure we have a working definition. Science is the pursuit and application of knowledge and understanding. Right there. That right there is good enough. What is it? What does she say? Science is what? Application. Knowledge and understanding, the pursuit of it, right? You want to get to what's true, right? And there are many ways you can do it, but that's what you're trying to do, right? All right. Which one do you have? Information. Come on up. Information. Facts provided or learned about something or someone. A vital piece of information. Okay. So, so wait. Did we, did we all get that? But did you need her to say it again? Okay. Let's say it one more time. Facts provided or learned so about facts something. facts that are either provided, given to you. Or learn. You somehow, right? We, we accumulate it and acquire it. So facts that are uh, provided or learned. Mm -hmm. About something or someone. Very good. You all got that? So we, we can use a science approach to gain that. Okay? Does that make sense? Science is not all just chemistry and biology. No, no, no. Those are just topics in science, but hey, science covers everything. How do I how do I learn? There's a science approach to understanding the scripture. What do we do? We use we use evidence. We go into the scripture. Even our own life tell us lines up with the scripture. That is true. Okay. All right. Who has uh, the word understanding? Come on. You all know uh, Brother Tony Brooks. Roman Sacks? You don't know that? I'm just showing you what God has done in the congregation. That's all. Come on, my brother. Let's see if he has an understanding. Okay, understanding. The ability to understand something. Comprehension. Comprehension. The, the ability to comprehend. Come on. Well, going on, um, for example, Foreign visitors with little understanding of English. 
the ability to understand something yep. and comprehension. Understand. So, so, and, and uh, Brother Tony, you, you know this, when I'm just looking at a word, I usually try to stay away from using that word in yeah, the definition yeah, yeah. to give you something else to think about, right? So I like the part where he said the ability to comprehend something, right? Mm -hmm. so to have a complete idea about something, right? And what about wisdom? Who has wisdom? If you don't, let him ask a guy. <laughs> The quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, or the quality of being wise. Read that again. Listen to this. The quality of having experience. Experience. So, so we were um, we were, we had a um, uh, one brother this years ago. I had an apartment. I was living in an apartment here in Drexel. And a brother was getting married, and then you know, a bunch of single brothers, we all together, we were giving, giving his brother dinner. And the brothers want to talk and get his brother wisdom. They ain't been married days first. <laughs> Lack, total experience. You could tell because the words are boom, 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 boom. And then one brother who'd been saved, since Sylvia, he said, he came in, he laid it out. I was sitting there going, this is what we should have been doing in the first place is listening to him. I said, we, all of us, should have just been listening to him. Right? Experience. This is dealing with wisdom. Experience. What else? Knowledge. They have the knowledge. They're not a novice in whatever area you're talking about because they have knowledge. They have experience. Come on. And good judgment. They have yeah. good judgment. They know and to use it and when not That's right. to use it. You hear that? You hear those elements? Thank you very much. Yes, sir, brother. So we can get sir. those definitions. Good evening. I have a question behind those words. When you say that all those definitions could be like a conglomeration of all the concepts come together for a purpose. Like, I'm learning to fly a drone. You learn about the weather. So you got, you, it's a lot of stuff you have to learn about the weather, you know. So it's a collaboration, you know, knowledge, understanding the definition in order to bring it to pass. Very good, brother. All right. So we have these elements that we do. You know what we get a lot around here? We get a lot of information, don't we, saints? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Facts provided or learned about something. Don't we get a lot of that around here? Mm -hmm. But what we want to do with the knowledge and information we get around here, there are higher area levels of, of thought and thinking and application. I don't know about you, but I really try to seek the Lord on, I don't want to just be an accumulator of information. I want to be able to use it first for my life. Notice the, the highest one is wisdom. The first thing she said was experience. Right? It's hard to be wise in an area if you haven't experienced it. Uh, my son was in the Air Force. He said they were flying... Um, in one over one country in Africa, I can say this time he was in the Air Force. I couldn't say stuff like that. But they were flying in one area of uh, of Africa, and they ran into and this guy. He was a lieutenant. He was a, a freshman flyer, so he was piloting in the plane. And they ran into a really bad storm, and and the landing was going to be quite tough. So. Though he was learning, he was doing well, it got so bad that the captain came over. Let me take it. All right, captain has the chair. And he took over because he had experience. He knew how to apply what, when, and where. That's, that's a little different than just, so the lieutenant, he had, he, he had to be good to be in the program. 
So no, no doubt. I don't doubt your. I don't doubt your ability to learn. That's good, but you don't have the experience yet. So the captain was loaded with wisdom. I know what to do in a in in a, in a situation like this. I've experienced this before. You got lightning all around and sheer forces all around. And he said, "Let me take this over." And he had good judgment. He knew exactly where to land. It. Did a difference. So there's nothing wrong with getting information. We have to. But we want to seek taking it to the next level. Is that right, saints? Yeah. <laughs> so let's go to Ecclesiastes 1. So we're going to start at verse 13. Come on, my sister. This is really good. And something came to my mind, Brother Arnold, as you were talking. And I wanted to read the scripture, Psalm 31, uh, verse 14. Hmm? But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. And one thing during my professional career, um, the God would not let me move from a certain position for about seven years. And I did not understand why, because other people were getting a year and a half experience and then jump into another position and making all this money. I'm like, why can't I move? I want to do the same thing. And I realized that gathering information is not the same as having that wisdom sure. and that experience. People are gathering information and moving up and making a train wreck where they were because they didn't have the wisdom. They were just gathering information. So God helped me to gain the wisdom in seven years, and then I was able to move up. You can promote yourself too fast and fail. It's called promoting to fail. Absolutely. I was offered higher positions. I was like, oh, no, I'm not ready for that. You got to be humble enough to say, I, you know who was a great example of this was Pastor Gordon. Man, I sit down and talk to him. He'll go, I don't know. Let's go get brother so-and-so. And listen, when you find out, he would say this. When you find out, would you please come back and let me know? Yeah. That's why he knew so much. <laughs> Wisdom told him, don't try to fix it. A good I don't know is better than a, a patched up answer. <laughs> Leading somebody astray. Don't let people push you in the corner to come up with something. Listen, I don't, I'm not sure at all. I don't know. I don't know. Nothing's wrong with that. Wisdom will teach you that. <laughs> okay, let's go to Ecclesiastes 1, starting at verse 13. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom. Who is this talking? Solomon. Solomon. He was known as the what? Wisest man. Okay, let's look at this. Come on. And I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. Okay, now you know you can't get wisdom on everything, right? But you know what he said? I'm going to be a lifelong learner and I want to continue to gain wisdom in area. Okay, all right. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith. There. It's a tough chore for God to give us this task. Read the original words. He said, man, God giving me this task to continue to g gain all his wisdom is real tough as a human. So Solomon, he was, he was vexed quite a bit because he was so wise and things, he would pick things up and then he'd be like, Thanks. How many of you understand that when God give you uh, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom in an area, you're the one that need patience when you're dealing with others. Amen. Right, choir teacher. And it's you all. You all. Are, no, no, no. Do that part again. Listen. Listen. We're gonna hit the ski. Me, 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 me. Now you repeat the sound. Nah, 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 nah. No, no, no. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah. No. Right? Hey. And then so Sylvia used wisdom. We go, okay, he won't be leading the song. <laughs> <laughs> she has experience and yeah. <laughs> 
So wisdom is the application. It's the application of the knowledge. Okay? The correct application of the experience. Okay? So he says, come on. Verse 14, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Oh, man. You know, when you compare God and eternity and the things of God to what we hear, what we experience here, saints, we experience a whole lot because, look, look what Adam did to us. And now here we are, you and I are left to try to figure it out. And that's why we need to work. We need to absolutely, we don't know. We need God to help us. The wisdom, not just the information, but the actual wisdom you have in an area, God helped you and me. Even unsaved people. Isn't that right? How did they know back in the day, I'm talking 1700s, 1500s, how did they know there was going to be an eclipse on a certain day? They didn't have the, the Hubble telescope and when did Newton do physics? I, I forgot when he did physics. I mean, when he did uh, calculus. This man came up with calculus, this math, to try to help and now it's used in all types of areas to help us understand things better. It's like, where did they get it from? God helping man. I'm telling you, God is God is trying, He tries to help us. He tries. And then people think, then they take the glory to themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Newton's law. This man figured out that gravity was equal to mass time acceleration. How did he do? What did he measure? Did he go out there and say, okay, let me try to measure, let me try to measure this. What? what? <laughs> he figured out, he was able to figure out the gravitational force between the Earth, the Sun, and all the other planets, and all of this stuff. So there's nothing wrong with them knowing this, but God is the one who put them in orbit. <laughs> They try to say, well, there's no God, it's gravity. No, God made the gravity, helping us to figure it out. He just shows us how to do it. Shows us how to do it. Huh? So he just gives man some wisdom. Use it, and then people, you know, uh, Lionel Harris wrote a song, uh, There's No Equal to You, O God. And, and at the beginning, he says, history is full of man's achievement. He says, frail are all these ventures at their very best. While we toast our success, you create another day. And I can see how you might be amused. <laughs> God's like, here's another day, here's another day. What you do? Oh, you finally, you finally found out how an electron work. I've been trying to tell you, here's another day, here's another day, here's another day. Finally. Man, I'm telling you. All right, let's keep going. Verse 15, that which is crooked cannot be made straight. So you got to deal with a person. So this is where experience comes in. Uh, uh, who said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken? Or see, was, that, was that David? Right, right, right. He ain't lived everything. So maybe he didn't. But we have. <laughs> We've experienced verse 15, that which is crooked cannot be made straight. I disagree. Look at our lives. His experience, see, you got to understand where he was. He experienced so much negativity. He experienced so much badness with people. He's like, we're all messed up. That's why he says it's all vexation. Mm -hmm. But things that are crooked, Of ourselves, there's no way. How are you going to straighten yourself out? Here's even more. How are you going to straighten somebody else out? Look at us with our children. We try to give them all type of advantages and all this stuff. And then when they grow up and get older, they go, by the way, thanks for all that. I'm going to do what I want to do anyway. 
Yep. You can't straighten us out. You can't straighten anybody out. That takes God. Isn't that right, saints? Amen. All right, we're going somewhere here. Come on. And that which is wanting cannot that, be numbered. That which is lacking, you can't come to the end of it. We lack so much of ourselves, saints. Isn't that right? When we get an understanding of where we are relative to God, saints, we can start getting help. Is that right? Come on. I communed with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate and have gotten more wisdom than all that they have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. Oh, listen. He's like, listen. He recognized God gave him something very special. Top wisdom in Jerusalem. He could see that. He could see it. Look at, look at Pastor Dudes, Pastor Gordon, and all the different ones who are leading up. Don't you know, saints, they could, you know, you're talking about patience. Every one of us in here is different and at different levels. It takes patience to deal with me. How about you? I'm about to need patience. I see two hands up on one sister. Absolutely. Thanks. When we get to understanding, so you know what we need to do? We need to slow down and gain knowledge about ourselves. Amen. How I am. I get defeated so quickly. God want to give us information and understanding about ourselves. I talk too much and I talk too fast. He'll give us wisdom and say, I'm going to use your tongue. You're going to know when, where, how, when, I, when I'm done with you. Oh, but are you still flying off the handle? Okay, here you go. Where? How does that feel? How does that feel? You know, then we'll get, we'll get, we'll start running when the, when the fire and the Holy Ghost pays us off for, for that fast talking tongue and all of that. We go, oh, Lord, I've been talking. And now he said, no, 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 I've been talking to you about it for a long time. I can see now you need experience. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost, well, he's like, oh, you're fired. That's the devil. No, it's not. That's me. I allowed it. I've been telling you all along. Isn't that right? He loved us so much that he wants us to learn about who we are. Amen. It, the, the information, the science, the understanding, the wisdom, I'm talking about saints. First needs to begin, we need to learn ourselves. Isn't that right? Do you ever take the time to be real with yourself as to who you are? Do you all know what I'm talking about? Yes. Take an inventory of who. It's so easy to look at these people. Uh, because now that I have understanding in an area, then I look down on the person who haven't had the experience yet, and I compare myself and I forget the scripture that says that they who do that, not the action, they who do it are not wise. Second yeah. Corinthians 10. He said they who compare themselves amongst themselves. He said they, those people, are not wise. Where did our knowledge and understanding even about ourselves come from? Didn't it come from God? So we get all this teaching, things that can help us. But you know what we need to do, saints? Somebody said about taking time to what? Slow down. We are very complex. Isn't that right? To get to know who we are, we need experience in situations. God will say, listen, when you go, when you go talk to the higher-ups, you tend to start melting in their presence. But I want to help you. How many of us want help from God to gain wisdom? Well, like Solomon, you know, that requires, that requires some going through some things. Not recoiling, but being able to take what he wants us to go through. Is that right? And God knows I don't need to add stuff to myself and be, and be uh, uh, buffeted. For my what? Oh, my God. own fault. What did the Bible say about that? 
Take it. He said, take it patiently, right? No, that's not what it says at all. Mm -hmm. It says, take it patiently? Question mark. Don't say take that patiently at all. It says, take it patiently? Question mark. I don't need that, brother. I've done it. Have you? I'm just talking to the ones who are honest. Have you done th some things on your own? You go, man, I better not do that again. Right. You all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, listen. So, some things, Sister Crystal, some things take years. God is like, he's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Open the oven. You know that little temperature, little indicator thing in the turkey? That thing may have popped up. He goes, no, I'm going to push it back down. <laughs> It's, it's time. Listen, you need to take your time and bake in this. Lord, what you need to understand who you are. You get influenced. When I tell you what to do, you get influenced by others and you change your mind. I'm going to show you who you are. Good. Real good. Wisdom, brother. Wisdom. He said, now you get the experience. You're going, we're, going, we're going to take you through. When, when we're done... <laughs> When God is done, if we take, now listen, we, here's where we fail. Here's where we fail. We, you know it's optional. We do not have to take the lesson. You know we can reject God's hand, right? You know that, don't you? And then I'm in a wilderness for you. That should have taken me 11 days. 40 years later, I'm still going through. When he wants to do this, he wants to give us experience, knowledge, and good judgment. That's what he wants to take us up to concerning who we are. If we take the time to stop looking at others so much, have you ever, ever judged people and go, man, that stuff right there just don't make no sense? And God ever said to you, you remember you used to be like that? That's right. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to go help them. Huh, Lord, they don't want to listen. You didn't either. <laughs> Lord, they seem so hard-headed. Oh, you mean like how you were? I took time with his sister. This has been on my mind. He took time with me when he could have cut me off. Isn't that right, saints? Mm -hmm. Now, how, who do we think we are? We can't take time with others to help them get their experience. God put his hand on you. He'll say, listen, you have need of patience. You're going to go help them. But, Lord, they're this way and that way, and it's only vexation of spirit. He said, exactly. We're not our own, saints. Come on, my sister. We're bought with a price. Even to the saints, I'm enjoying this lesson, Brother Arnold. Um, the thought came to my mind when you talked about wisdom and experience that you may have experienced something one way in your life, and then later on you experience in a whole different way that you don't know. And um, I taught you know my older child how to read, but now, like the school, you read 20 minutes a day for this for all these different children, and it was a lot for me. And I was you know trying. 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, three different levels of children, and it was becoming frustrating, so I had need of patience. And I asked God, I'm like, God, I need you to help me. You know, I'm trying to get this thing done, this thing done, this thing done, and God brought it to my mind to combine some of the things that we were doing. So instead of everybody reading different things, um, I got the Sunday school book, the older Sunday school, the children's Sunday school mm. book. And all of us started reading it together. So that was our 30 minutes of reading time. And because of the way that the Bible is written, you can have a word like faith, and that will be your root word. And then you can have unfaithful, faithfully, you know, faithless. And so now we're learning prefixes, we're learning suffixes, we're learning root words and base words, and it took up all of the time. Then with that reading, they were able to take what they read and do their book report. And I had, you know, just overly frustrated with something that seems so simple and natural, but God gave me the scripture in Jer for just my life. Yeah. In Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me and I will answer thee 
and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not of. And that word great means important. If it's important to you, you call on God and he'll show you how to how to set this thing up just light, basic things, because that thing was frustrating to me. And the frustration was dealing with my patience and that, you know, now you're just it just it can work you up to a place where if you just go I went to God and it was like he said, Look, do it like this. And it did I'm like, wow. that's one more thing to do. Wow. But he was like, I'm gonna take out all these things with just one simple thing. And that was an experience I had never had before. Wow. But he gave me the wisdom yeah. to do something that of myself I That's couldn't it. figure out. That's it. That's wisdom. Yes. You may have just helped several of us. <laughs> but she took her uh uh her her godly based material and said, Let me accomplish this. Mm-hmm. Isn't that right? Oh, man, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing Amen. that. Let me finish this up because we want to get to, I'm, I'm almost out of time here. Let's go to verse 18. What does he say? For in much wisdom, much wisdom is, much grief, is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Let me ask you a question. I'm talking about those who reel with yourself. Have you been real with yourself enough where you go, this makes no sense to be like that. I mean, frustrated with you. There you go again, Arnold. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. God, listen. Listen, Lord. When you see, I'm telling you, this, I'm telling you, I pray. Lord, when you see me like leaning, not be, I want you to get me before I get there. If you see me going that path, would you please tell me? And he will. He said, there you go again. You're about to, I mean, okay, no, I'm not doing that. That hurts. And you keep doing it, and then he give you victory over that area about you. But you know what? Some things God has done uh, for me, you know, some things God has done for me, Sister Chris, he still said, like, let, let me give you all one of the, yeah, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Let me give you my weakness. I should have had a T-shirt on with a capital P on it for procrastination. God is like, listen, I'm going to have you wear that T-shirt the rest of your life. Because you need to keep that before you. You understand? You're a procrastinator. So when it's time to get something done, you make sure you have that T-shirt on, so to speak. Think with me. Right? And, and you say to yourself, you can't put it off till later. You're a procrastinator. Even in this class I'm in, I go, listen, listen, I'm about to go sit down and get this done. You know why? Because I'm a procrastinator. Are you real with yourself? Because the way we are naturally, we'll be that way spiritually. We have to get, Bruce Lee said, one must get to know oneself. (laughs) We'll be real with who we are. And the God can start helping us. Oh, I'm so intimidated by everything. Oh, I'm intimidated by everything. Oh, that person has a big title behind it. Whew, I got over titles a long time ago. After I got burned up a few times, you get over titles. God will take you through. He'll say, "Okay, listen, you, you done? You still? No, sir. I'm going. I'm going right now, Lord." <laughs> That's right. Real quick, um, I have a question for us. I'm not gonna be able to go further, but I have a question I want to leave on our mind. Brother Ron Lewis, we, we tease each other with this question time to time. And the question is, do we understand all we know? A lot of knowledge. And it may not be one to one. I told you about a move I was doing in martial arts that I had no idea the application of. I was doing it well. The teacher was looking good, good. I, and I said, How did, what is it for? I mean, I had the knowledge, but I didn't understand it. You understand what I'm saying, saying? So that's what God wants to help us with. Uh, thank you for your participation tonight. And, you know, we dealt with science, information, understanding, wisdom. Let's see God as we go higher and higher in the things of God, 
and, and really, saints, we got to get to know ourselves so we can identify those areas that he can change. He's always trying to talk to us about ourselves. He'll show us if we take time. Is that right? God bless you. Thank you for your participation. And we are um, want to let you know that, Lord willing, on Sunday at 1030, we'll have devotion. And then at 11 o'clock, live stream. But come for devotion. There's a lot of good songs and testimonies and all that we hear. So, Lord willing, we'll see you on Sunday. Mm -hmm.